You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, and Harry here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. I just, whew, I just got done with the workout, so I'm a little time, a little bit out of breath. I'm recovering. I'm coming back at you today with a new, uh, new Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. So the last place we left off, yeah, we were just talking to Bax in the park, getting to know him better. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy them. Continue for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in, shall we? Yeah, uh, YouTube is still rendering my, uh, the, my, my sensor bars for the latest episode of A Place to Call Home, so look out for that today as well. Anyway, here we go. All right. <clears throat> All right. For a brief moment, you could have sworn seeing them kissing, seeing kissing their sleeves repeatedly, but maybe you're just imagining things. Ah, sorry about that, Cassian. You probably haven't seen someone approaching me like so before. Well, it's actually something I've seen before back in my world. But are you actually this popular here? Popular? Huh. <laughs> no, nothing so big. I'm just fulfilling my duty and the people around here just happen to recognize my face is all. Right. Now, let's keep moving. Keep your eyes peeled and let me know if you spot anything out of the ordinary. Got it. You have continued the patrol around the perimeter for a while. So far, there hasn't been anything suspicious. Sometimes there are people walking up to you asking for directions or a specific place in the park. None of which you could answer, unfortunately. Though luckily, Max was always there to address them instead. He made a few more rounds while keeping an eye on the Guardian Crystal before heading back to the guild. <laughs> huh? Where are you going, Cassian? Max said as you were about to head back to the dorm. Uh, oh, ooh, whoops, guess all the walking made me want to call it a day. Huh, <laughs> it's okay. We still need to go to Alex's first. Oh, goody. You know, I'm uh, pretty nervous about the test results. You chuckled to yourself. I understand. It's going to be all right, though, Cassian. Y yeah, I, I hope so. Well, well, finally you're here. You heard Alex speaking through the intercom as you approached the lab door. Hey, Alex. Hey. Sorry, pal, we had patrol duty in the city before we could go here. Don't pal me, Max. Just come in, take a seat, and stop wasting my time. All right, all right. Good old Alex. A grump as usual. So, what's the result? Patience. Don't rush me. He raised a hand dismissively while typing something. Eventually, a holographic god diagram appeared in front of them all of a sudden. Right, right. So what we have here is quite interesting he said, eyeing you in, in the diagram intently. Nothing seems to be wrong with your anatomy. Everything is where it should be. Nothing is out of the ordinary, and nothing is missing. He clicked on the screen, and the, and the mage, the magi, magi label of the diagram was overlaid, but what looked like a bunch of wires going all around your body, connected to the center point of your body. Uh, is this? <sighs> you don't know what these are. These are your blood vessels, or your circulatory system. Magi particles follow this system to distribute themselves across your body accordingly. So that means there's nothing wrong with my blood flow, right? You tried to recall anything you've learned from biology class years ago. He tapped at the screen and dragged it in the opposite way. The hologram changed to one to what looked like Alex's body scan. Notice anything different? Unlike yours, his circulatory system seemed to glow a yellow, a yellowish hue instead. It's glowing? Good. He's not blind. Under certain light frequencies, the magi particles in your body will emit light based on your elemental affinity. Yours doesn't glow. This would mean your body doesn't have any magi particles at all, or so I would assume. You can't for now. Your body has a trace amount of magi. 1,400... Whoa, good lord. To be precise, it's impossibly small. Even newborns have 15% magi inside them, so it's 1.4718%. Okay. The lowest magi count on a macroscopic living creature is the Devona tree with 3%, and that's because they live in the middle of arid terrains like deserts. At least it's larger than a microscopic creature. Same can't be said for your intelligence scale, though. Uh, intelligence scale? Heh, <laughs> see what I mean, Max? Hm. aren't you being a bit rude, Alex? Huh. Huh. <sighs> Anyway, with you, I've finally found living proof of a creature from another dimension. I can finally rub that smug look off those council members. He said before sitting back down typing some things. There is one unaccounted for anomaly, however. The Magi Trace that I've mentioned, it's nothing that I know about. I'm still unsure, but it might be something to do with your being transported here. Hmm, 
I'll ask Alyssa if she knows something about this. As you should. I'd want to know how she knows these things so well without proper equipment. Now, any questions? None so far. Hmm, so that explains how I can barely sense you. The Magi count is very, very low. Yeah, it's quite shocking even for me. He is quite the specimen. It would be a colossal waste should he die trying to be a hero. Hmm, I assure you he's not gonna he's not just gonna drop dead, Alex. I've been training him. Oh yeah? Try lifting that gun over there then. Me? Oh, um, alright. He looked at the gun that Lynx pointed at, which looked like a futuristic bazooka, but with a lot of extra tidbits attached to it. You held the gun by its sides and tried your best lifting it off the desk. It's so much heavier than it looks, but what the heck is this thing even made of? Your arms are already feeling sore, even though you can only move it a little from the desk. Well, as you can see, if this is the hero we get, then I could say with utmost confidence that we, quite possibly, are doomed. Hmm. Anyhow, now that I've told you everything that needs to be told, you may leave. Alright, thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, yeah, just go. I need to get back to work. You both exited the lab and headed back to the lobby. Hmm. Sorry to make you go through all that, Cassian. It's alright, Max. Well, you want to have dinner? My treat. Sure, if you don't mind, that is. Alright, then. He grabbed your hand and led you to the tavern. Good evening, Max, Cassian. Right this way. Ashford took you to an empty table after his usual greeting. What can I get you, good sirs, tonight? We have a special menu. Wait, why do I feel like I've done this before? Hey, Max, got room for one more? God damn it. Hey, Toby, done with your tasks? Yep. The shipments arrived in one piece, and I left as soon as someone else took over. Nothing interesting happened, though. Well, isn't that a good thing? Yeah, but still, I was bored as heck. <clears throat> Ashford cleared his throat. Ah, sorry. Well, three buffalo steaks then, all medium rare. All right, three buffalo steaks coming right up. You let out a small sigh as you sat down. Max and Toby's constant chatter was the only thing you could hear aside from the nosy, no, noisy ambience of the tavern. Though at least Max still tried to include you in the conversation sometimes. And the food was good as per usual, so it was quite all right. When you all finished, you both bid Toby goodbye as Max escorted you back to your room. Well, see you tomorrow, Cassian. Oh, uh, wait, Max. What are we going to do tomorrow, actually? Well, the festival's coming up, so I do need to practice. Care to join me? It'd be a good practice session for you, too. Sure. T see you tomorrow? See you tomorrow. Have a good night, Cassian. He rubbed your head, and you could feel your tail wagging. <laughs> you returned to your room after he left and prepared for a good night's sleep. You couldn't help feeling giddy after spending quite a nice day with Max. That said, you could still remember the tiger looking disappointed and even annoyed at you for whatever reason. Yeah, because he wasn't into Max's pants. Maybe he doesn't like how Max has been looking out for you, or maybe he's just jealous. You wouldn't know for sure either way. Oh well, it is how it is. You shrugged as you made up your mind to discard those thoughts and went to sleep after some time. <laughs> oh lord, is he going to have one of them dreams? Uh-oh. You have never been here before. Yet, somehow the large chamber felt familiar to you. You felt like you've been here for a long time. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh shit, there it is, yep. My lord, all preparations have been made. We await only your command. Good. Anything else to report? Sinus wishes to send you his regards, my lord. He appears to be faring well. That's good. And Linus? Tech tips? Already in position, as requested. Make sure he's in prime condition for tomorrow. Do not disappoint me, Vic. As you wish, my lord. Hmm? Oh, you're here. Hmm. Eavesdropping on others like so. And I would have thought they'd have taught you better. Then again, it matters not. Once I've gotten through this wretched city, your next hero. The shattered figure let out a bellowing laugh that battered your ears. You held your head and cowered into a corner, wondering when it'd all be over. The deafening laughter somehow became more high-pitched as time went on, before turning into the familiar ring of your alarm clock. Jesus. 
That's not good. Ah, <clears throat> my head! You slowly sat up with a groan, looking around just to make sure it was still your room. A throbbing headache rendered you dizzy for a moment. What was that about? You tried to recall what you dreamt of, though most of the details have already faded from your mind. The only thing that remained was that last laugh. Hmm. You shuddered. It was the same laugh from your nightmares. You decided to stay in bed until your head got better. Afterwards, you went through your morning routines and prepared for another day with Max. Though you still had this uneasy feeling in your heart. Hmm. That dream. You still couldn't see the figure clearly, but you've made more sense of your surroundings. Maybe there's a lot more to that, but you decided not to think of that right now. You quickly finished prepping up and went to the field after having breakfast. You could see Max already there doing some warm-up moves. Max! Hey! Good morning, Cassian. Ready for another day of training? You bet I am. That's the spirit. Let's get on with the warm-up. I booked a place for us to train for today. All right. You opened up your shirt without thinking much. Hmm, that's new. You usually keep your clothes on. Oh, uh, w well... Huh. <laughs> now that I look at you, you're pretty well built, Cassian. Thanks, I still got a long way to go, though. You replied timidly. Now that Max mentioned it, your body does look a lot more well-toned compared to how it was before you got here. Maybe it was part of the transformation, or it could just be all the workout you've been doing compared to your past lifestyle. Hey, just keep at it and you'll get there. Now, let's start, shall we? You joined Max to do the usual stretching and warm-up exercises. Toby was nowhere to be seen this morning. You have no complaints about that, though it did feel strange to not see him popping up out of nowhere by then. You followed Max to the lobby after the warm-up session. You noticed some lights beeping and blinking on his belt. Uh, Max, what's that? Oh, this? Alex gave it to me yesterday. He said that if it beeps, that means he needed something from me. It's kind of like a notification device. Oh, oh, okay. Jeez, what is he, a, his butler? Better get going. We'll go to the training room after this. All right. Oh, boy. You both headed down to the lab. You could see the Lynx working at his desk as the door slid aside. Alex? Finally, you're here. I've been pinging you for minutes. Are there any emergencies? Oh, not really. I just want to test if the transmission worked properly. I've designed a series of short and long blinks that can be combined and translated into proper sentences. I called it the course code, since it's not as refined as our current written language. So, you're inter so you interrupt my training just to be your test subject. More or less. If only I can send you written messages instead, but alas, we only have this beeper thing. You suddenly remembered something as Max shrugged. You hesitated for a moment before speaking up. Uh, hey, I'm sorry to butt in, but... You guys don't use phones here? A phone, you say? What's a phone? Well, it's a device used to send written and voice messages across the continent. Back in my world, almost everybody has one. Most use it to communicate with one another. Oh, a communication device. We have that as well. But the current design is very cumbersome and inconvenient. Wait, did you say everybody has one? Um, yeah, a lot of the older designs are pretty big too, but the ones that we use are compact enough. I can show you if you want. I happen to bring I happen to bring one on me when I suddenly got here. You do? Y yes I, I mean, <clears throat> yes, please. The Lynx's eyes gleamed even brighter than the last time. I've been developing a similar device, though progress has been rather slow. It seems to lack some kind of component. If I could take a closer look at this phone of yours, maybe I could figure out what's missing. Right, if you say so. One second, guys. Itching my nose. Itchy nose! Okay, nose is scratched. Well, I'll head back to my room and grab it, and grab it then. Sure, sure, but just don't take too long. Hmm. You went back to your room and picked up your phone among your belongings. You gave it a quick once over. Aside from a few scratches on the screen, it was in pretty good condition. You flipped it a few times just to make sure nothing is out of place, before shoving it to your pockets and dashed back to the lab. No sneeze. Don't you dare sneeze. No, don't sneeze. Oh god, okay. I'm okay. Alex snatched the phone from your hand before you could say anything. Fascinating. It's so thin and light. Huh, are you sure it's okay for me to have this? I haven't even said anything about that yet. Uh, I guess... It ran out of power a week ago or so since I didn't have anything to recharge it. Besides, I don't think I can use it anymore here. I see. Well, thank you. As compensation, I will give you a replacement as soon as I complete mine. 
Now, run along. I'm sure both of you have no time for idle chit-chat. Uh, okay. Let's go, Cassian. You felt Max patting your shoulders. You followed him out the lab. I'm sorry that he's like that, Cassian. Alex can be very passionate about his work. No worries, Max. I don't have much use for that thing anyway. If it can help him, then why not? Well, that's very kind of you, Cassian. But I'm afraid the same can't be said for what I'm about to do to you. He smirked. Uh, what do you mean by that? Oh, no. It's training time, and afterwards you and I are going to do some sparring. S sparring are, are you sure I'm ready? Well, ready or not, you'll have to. The King's advances are getting quicker, with each day's passing. So time to get serious, Cassian. Uh, Alright. Poor Cassian, he's gonna get his ass kicked. Now, throw your clothes over there. Things are gonna get messy. <laughs> you tossed your clothes at the corner, leaving only your pants. You can see Max doing the same on the other on the other corner. Here, stand in front of me and try to copy my moves. Show me your moves. Uh, how is this any different from your warm-up sessions? You'll see. Try to hit me. Um, okay. You awkwardly threw a punch at him, only for only for him to quickly deflect it and shoved you off balance. Before you knew it, you were falling on your tail. Ow! What was that, Cassie? And I thought you I thought I taught you how to punch. Come on, let's do it again. Punch me. This time remember the stance I taught you, and be sure to put more force into it. Uh, okay. You tried again, this time following his advice. He still deflected your hit like nothing, but you didn't flinch as much from this pu from his push. God! Suddenly you felt a jolt in your stomach. Max had already hit you with his knee. Always be prepared for a follow-up attack, and keep a close eye out to your enemy's movements. Now, again! You repeated this routine several more times. You could tell he was going easy on you, but a punch is still a punch. Thank God you didn't eat too much this morning. After the session, you stopped for a lunch break before Max took you for another rehearsal at the training room. Now you get why it's so different. During warm-ups, there's no opponent to fight, so you only have to flail your arms around in the air. Here, you have to learn the right stances, as well as getting a better feel of the attacks and the flow of your body. There's still a lot that went over your head, but you do feel a lot stronger from the session. <sighs> Whew! Good job so far, Cassian. <laughs> Thanks! So, what do you think? Yeah, it's, uh... It's different than the warm-ups. I think I get what you mean, Max. Huh, <laughs> well, you should. Because after this, you'll fight against me. I'll make sure to put you right where you belong, pinned under my body. Uh, what? Did I say something wrong? N nothing, just that the one who's gonna be at the bottom is you, Max. Huh, <laughs> bring it on, Cassian. My body is ready. How this man keeps throwing things like that with a straight face. Well, that's enough chatting. Get up, Cassian. Let's run this through one more time. Do some lighter exercise and then we'll spar. Uh, okay. This ought to be good. You spent the next few hours training with him before wrestling, before resting for an hour. Well, ready, Cassian? Yeah, I'm ready. You stood before Max at the center of the training room. All right, you can do this. Focus, Cassian. You got into your stance and prepared for your first spar against Max. He seemed to be composing himself with a deep breath as well. Here goes. Max stepped forward, keeping his distance from you. He could be baiting you to go forward as well. What will you do? Step backward. Step backward, give you some distance from your foe. You step backward cautiously. Max seemed to be approaching you. You managed to sneak a low punch to his chest. You felt your fist brushing against his chest fur, which felt really soft and silky. Whoa there, that's cute! Now look alive! Max threw a high punch at your face. What will you do? You barely dodged the punch and caught Max by surprise. You made use of the opening and landed a hit against his stomach, which felt quite hard down against your fist. Huh! Nice one, Cassian. You saw Max about to throw a roundhouse kick at you. What should you do? Uh, a kick is going to hit a lot harder than a punch. So, duck and punch. You ducked and aimlessly punched in front of yourself. Suddenly you heard a loud thump. You see Max on the ground, yelping and whimpering while covering his crotch. Oh my god! You hit him in the dick! <laughs> ah! I'm sorry, Max. I didn't mean to. It's okay. Mm -mm. I'm gonna be okay. S sorry. You quickly helped him stand up. Okay, I guess that's it for today. You've done quite well, Cassian. Hmm. I thought you might have overpowered me at some point, even. But really? Heh, <laughs> maybe not completely. Your moves and footwork were a bit rough, but you still managed to hit me a couple times. Good job. Still, that doesn't mean you deserve a vacation or anything. So get ready to train again tomorrow. Oh, alright. You turned away to pick up your clothes. Cassian! 
But yeah, ma- Whoa! He suddenly leapt towards you and pinned you to the ground. Da! Ah! I told you I'll put you under my body. M Max, what are you doing? Did you a lesson, Cassian. Never turn your back against your opponent that easily. Always be wary of surprise attacks. You can feel his fur brushing against yours. It felt so soft and warm. You can even smell his body now that you're this close up. This close up. This, uh... This feels nice. Hmm? Is something wrong, Cassian? I'm sorry I pounced on you so suddenly, but I think this might be a good lesson for you. <laughs> oh, God. He liked your nose, and you could feel your cheeks getting hotter. This guy is so oblivious. Either that or he's playing coy. I don't know. I think, I th I think Max is kind of, uh... Extremely blunt. He's clever, but he's also blunt. Like, I think a lot of the stuff that Cassian picks up on is just, like, going right over his head. He's just not thinking at it. He's just not thinking deeply about it. He's just doing what he does. Ah, if this were Ray, on the other hand, that dude would know exactly what he was doing. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!